Kasori have sent me another air fryer for review. As I have liked both of the models they sent me before, they offered me opportunity to review this one, so I said yes. So let's take a look at it, shall we? So this is the Dual Blaze Twin Fry. It's a 10 litre air fryer, so it is massive. Um, and it splits into two, according to this. So you can do two dishes, two ways. Ideally, if, like me, you have a vegetarian son and then non-vegetarian, the rest of the family, you can cook two meals at once. It's got four heaters to cook evenly. It's a little image of it here. We've got something to do with an app there. So that, that'll be quite interesting. So it says, uh, got bonus items included. So we've got some tongs, apparently. Uses less energy than a conventional oven and uses up to 95% less oil, which is what all air fryers do. On the top, welcome to a world of possibilities. Indeed. And like all Kasori's, you get a little bit of an explanation of what it can do. So you can roast, air fry, grill, dehydrate, reheat and bake. Very nice. And it just shows you what the item looks like there. So should we get it unboxed? I think we should. Box is open now, so we'll see what goodies we get. First up, we've got this nice bit of packaging here with the Kasori brand on there. What have we got here? So there's a, a bit of a, a thank you card here, just telling you how to follow Kasori on social media and how to get an extended warranty. So that's interesting. Now we've got a quick start guide. I will run through these in a bit more detail. Um, so I'll just put that down for now. User manual as well, just in case you don't yet know how to use an air fryer. But if it's your first one, then good choice. If it's not, then it's not too dissimilar to other ones. Right, what else have we got? We've got what looks like the divider. So it's got a heat shield here, so it's metal. But then around the edge it's got rubber, I'm assuming that's so it sticks in. Obviously that'll be heat proof as well, um, otherwise it'll just melt. Then next up we've got heat plate for one side, which is as you'd, you'd kind of expect. Just got rubber feet on there just so it doesn't um, scratch the surface or anything like that. And then the other one here, let's take that out. So they will both go in the drawers, or drawer, and then we've got our free gift. Look at these, eh? <laughs> Do you know, I like these. It's the ones where you pull the bit at the back and they stay closed. So you push it in, and you've got a nice set of tongs here. Quite, quite nice, those have got a sort of rubberized texture to them. We'll be using those. And then we take the packaging off the top, just put that to one side, just get the box out of the way. Oh, right, so I'll just take this further packaging off. Well, I finally got into it and there's quite a lot of info on here so we'll uh, zoom right in. Right, here we go. So stacks of info here. So it's saying caution hot surface. So that roughly uh, translates to the bottom half of it. But we do have a handle on the front, which we'll look at in a moment. Obviously, do not fill with oil. It's not a deep fat fryer. Uh, caution hot surface. Yep, yeah, just already said that. Caution, the hot crisper plates may fall out when turning the basket over. Ah, Firmly insert the crisper plates into the basket to reduce the chance of them falling out. So normally with Kasori ones, you push it in a little bit and there's a little ridge, so I'll, I'll show you that. Use the handles on the side, place the basket on a heat resistant surface. Yeah, don't put it straight down on your, uh, your worktop, you might damage it. Please check the manual before use for complete details on operating your Kasori air fryer. Cook it in the grand zone. Cook a large batch of food by using the entire basket like a traditional air fryer. You so you select Grand Zone, remove the divider and place food into the basket. Select your cooking function, 
Adjust the settings using the temperature and time arrows. Tap play, pause to begin cooking. Sync, you can cook two foods using two different functions, temperatures or cook times. Program each zone and use sync to have both zones finish at the same time. Insert the divider and place food into the basket. Tap go or power. Select zone one. Select a cooking function. Adjust the settings using the temperature and time arrows. Select zone two. Repeat steps four and five. Tap sync. Press play pause to begin cooking. The zone with a shorter cook time will display hold. Match. Cooking the same food in each zone. Set zone one and use match to automatically duplicate settings to zone two. Insert the divider and place food into the basket. Tap power. Select zone one. Select cooking function. Adjust the settings using the temperature and time arrows. Tap match. Tap play pause to begin cooking. I'm going to do this. I'm going to demo it. So don't worry. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Before you get started, there's packaging inside. Before plugging in, remove the baskets and discard all packing material. Firmly insert the crisper plates and divide it into the basket. Then place the basket inside the air fryer. Note, when inserting the crisper plates, tilt the crisper plate to one side first, then press down on the other side. The crisper plates can only fit one way in the basket. Very important. So let's open it up. How do I even do that? <laughs> let's read the manual, shall we? Here we go. So, lots to look at here. I'm not going to read anything in a great amount of detail, but you can pause if you want to read things. Safety information there. Obviously, do not burn yourself, mostly. But there is some really useful other stuff there as well. So there is actually an app called the V-Sync app. So if you download that, you can apparently... You can check to see how long's left on your air fryer, which is very handy. So you download the VSync app, you log in to create an account and sign up, and then all you do is tap plus and follow the instructions. So it connects via Bluetooth, I believe. Um, or it might be uh, directly by Wi-Fi according to this, but we'll, we will have a look at it. So getting to know your air fryer. Display, setting up. So all sorts of useful information. Some really useful information here, such as the, the maximum temperature or the starting temperature, and then the temperature range, the minimum and the maximum, the time range, minimum and maximum, and the upper power and the lower power, as it's a dual blaze. So it cooks from the bottom and the top, which is nice. Cooking in the grand zone, bit of info for that. Cooking in the single zone, cooking in dual zones, sinking the cooking. It's all um, it's all pretty basic stuff, but if you're not sure and you've bought one of these, then do read the manual. So care and maintenance. Now this is key information. The basket and crisper plates are, check that out, dishwasher safe. So you don't really have to wash them by hand, which is brilliant. Uh, that for me is a game changer when it comes to uh, buying an air fryer. Bit of troubleshooting here. So just be careful what you're cooking there. If you cook some really fatty foods, then the fat goes all over the heating element, which can be quite dangerous. So just do be careful when you, you're doing that. And that's about it. So it wasn't a lack of strength as to why I couldn't get into it. It was because it was still attached with these little tabs. There's one at this side as well. And just peel that off. And it should now open. Hooray! Wow. That is massive. <laughs> so just put my hand in there and look, loads of space for cooking. Incredible. <laughs> this thing is quite heavy. So when it's got food in it, it's going to be even more heavy. But you've got these big handles on the side, so shouldn't be an issue. So we'll just remove the rest of the packaging. So if I look inside, there's another one of those little... Uh, sticky pads and we've got cardboard in there so yeah good job we have followed the instructions there otherwise that would have set on fire uh, underneath you've got the heating elements there and then if we look inside you've got the one above so it's going to heat your food right the way through which is absolutely marvellous 
those of you who haven't yet got your fix of peeling then here goes take the stickers off the top because we don't want to switch it on with those on get this one oh that's not coming off very well that's just my big blokey clumsy <laughs> method of removing it oh there we go that's one this one's a bit better it's one of those like plasticky ones they always peel better oh yeah oh that's nice Oh, so you've got kind of a, an interesting top to it. So this, this angled part is glossy uh, and I can see that the display is going to be there when we switch it on. It looks really smart. It's all touchscreen. Uh, there's no physical buttons. And then the top, this is a bit more of a matte finish and that's really, uh, really quite nice as well. It's a, it's a good looking unit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So should we switch it on? I think we should. So I've got that plugged in and switched on now and you just get just a really subtle orange light there. It just says standby. So before I turn it on, I'm just gonna put the uh, the drip trays and the, the middle section in as well. So they only go in one way. So which way is that? That is a question, ah, I see. So you've got curved edges at one side. So, ah, oh, there, yeah, that just pops in. So you put it in on one side and then push it down at the other. Just got the second one here, just gonna put that in. So you can see there's a rubber bit on the edge that goes in the corners and then in the center, it hasn't got those. So that's how you know that you're getting it in the right way. So I'll just plop that in. Oh, so the second one seems a bit tougher to get in, but it has gone in. That's the main thing. And then you've got a nice flat cooking area. And then you can either do it dual or single or two at once. So yeah, the grand zone, that's what it's called, isn't it? But you can slip this in down the middle. There you go, we've got our division there. So I'm gonna cook for my first meal, beer battered fish and chips and mushy peas, but I'm not doing the mushy peas in here. So, I'll just quickly go off camera, do a bit of prep, and then we'll uh, we'll get get it going. First up on Tomo's special menu tonight is extra large beer battered haddock fillets. So it does say on these; these are from Aldi, of course. Suitable for air fryer. But when you look at the instructions on the uh, on the top, it's a bit of a bit of a get out really by uh, by Aldi. So what it says is. This product is suitable for cooking in an air fryer. Please refer to the manufacturer's instructions for your air fryer. Ensure product is thoroughly cooked and piping hot throughout. Do not reheat, not suitable for microwave cooking. So I can understand that because different air fryers cook at different speeds. So we'll do just that. We will look at the instructions to find out how long we should cook the fish for. So within the quick start guide, we've got some rough guidance as to how long items should take. So it doesn't necessarily have everything in there, but if I look back at, um, at this fish, I'll just bring it back into the camera now. It doesn't actually give a weight, oh yeah. So 460 grams. So breaded shrimp, which is probably similar, 250 grams you do air fry at 205 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes now my intuition here is saying that i will do those for mm, about 15 minutes um i just want to make sure it's fully cooked next up on my menu is yet more easy to cook stuff from aldi so we've got steak cut chips delicious so if i look on the back see what cooking instructions we get We've got oven and deep fry. It doesn't really say anything about air frying, uh, but bearing in mind oven, electric, 15 to 20 minutes at 220 degrees. So let's just refer to the guide, see if we can get an idea of what we should do. So we've got French fries thin cut, that's no good. Uh, then we've got, oh well, not really anything there on the frozen food section. And then we just move to uh, to fresh stuff. So to be honest with you, 
what I'm thinking is we'll use the air fry mode because that's what you do with all throws and stuff pretty much and I'm going to do quite a few of these probably 500 grams so if I look at the thin cut 18 to 22 minutes at 195 so what I'm thinking is I want these steak cut chips to be nice and crispy on the outside so I'm actually going to do them at 200 degrees I'm going to do it for 25 minutes so we're going to do it two different zones we're going to do the chips 25 minutes at 195 and then we're going to do the fish at 205 degrees for about 15 minutes so let's set that up look at that that looks absolutely banging and I've not even started cooking it yet <laughs> so what we need to do now is lift it up Put it into the air fryer nice solid click there so switch it on right so what do we want to do on zone one so just remember zone one is the fish so we're going to do 205 degrees and we're going to do 15 minutes and then zone two i want to do 195 and I want to do it for, I think it was 25 minutes, wasn't it? No, I was going to do it 200 because I wanted to uh, to make sure that the fries were crispy. So we're on air fry already. So we've got zone one. I've done it wrong already. So that's, that's kind of good. So <laughs> zone one. So we'll do that right. 195. No. 205 so actually it turns out i've done it wrong i've done it right you go back to zone one and then you get the options to sync or match so we want to sync then we go to zone two and then sync's already on yet so i press play wow so doing the right hand side already left hand side holds until it's ready to start cooking the fish brilliant so let's see how this stuff's doing. So we just pull the draw out. So chips are heating up nicely. Obviously in the left hand side the fish haven't even started yet. But that's okay. Well it's cooking. It is fairly loud, but it is a an absolute unit. <laughs> I'm looking forward to like grilling uh, meats and stuff in this. Uh, but it's not advertised as an ultra quiet one or anything it's advertised for its functionality so you're ready here we go the left hand side with the fish is about to start how exciting look no hands i can't show you my other because i'm holding the camera there we go so they are perfectly synced fantastic so it's just got a little bit louder as the uh, air fryer side this side has started to kick out some heat so I'll pop back when the food's pretty much ready. There we go. We're into the final furlong now. 21 seconds to go. <laughs> so a little bit of safety advice. You can't put it down on a surface that it could set on fire or burn or melt. So here I've got this little uh, thing that's going to uh, going to make sure that the table doesn't get too hot. Because um, as you can see, I'm not really doing this in a kitchen, but I normally would. So, all right, so it has to cool off. That's quite nice because sometimes they finish and then your food is just too hot. There it is after a minute or, well, just less than a minute, I think it was. It then says end and we can take the food out. So let's have a look. <laughs> I'm going to get that plated up, get my peas in the microwave and then I'm going to enjoy this. There we go. Lovely fish and chips, so I'll try chip first. Mmm. I got the timing just right there. I'll try a bit of that fish as well. Beer battered. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's really nice. Well done, Aldi. After that lovely meal, we're on day two now, so... Before I do any more cooking, what I'm going to do is show you how to activate the Wi-Fi on the air fryer. So if you hold down the power button for five seconds, 
what will eventually happen is a little Wi-Fi symbol will appear there and it'll flash. And then on your phone, all you need to do is search for V-Sync, V-E-S-Y-N-C and install the app that comes up in the search results. Once you've got yourself signed in or signed up, if it's your first time using the app, you just add device. And then what you need to do is choose the device type. So in this case, it's a kitchen. And we've got the Kasori Dual Blaze Twin Fry 10 litre air fryer. So we'll go into that. And then you need to allow access to nearby devices. Do that in settings. So we can allow that. And try again. Plug in your device, it says. So we've already done that. Go next. Done that as well. It's found the device. And once you've connected to Wi-Fi, uh, which it'll ask you to do, I've not done that on camera because I don't want you knowing any of my credentials. Uh, so you can assign to an existing room, so we'll select kitchen. And then next. And we need to give the device a name, so we'll call it... Kasori. And we can give it a unique icon, but we'll leave it as it is. And then it says your device is all set, go ahead and try it out. So you can connect it to Google Assistant, so you can send it uh, lots of different commands. And it's got plenty of recipes on here. There we go. But what we'll do, we'll get it working. So if I click on Grand Zone Cooking, which is what I want to use, and it just tells me that I need to remove the middle bit and then we can set the temperature and the time so I'll just set it at 200 for 20 minutes just as a test on air fry then for safety reasons you do have to come over to the air fryer and hit play and there we go that is now cooking in the grand zone for 20 minutes at 200 degrees brilliant now we're gonna cook but before I do that let's see what happens if I try and stop it in the app are you sure you want to stop cooking? Yes, I do. Wow. Instantly, it stopped. That's brilliant. Right, so what we're going to cook, we're going to do the big one. We're going to do the Christmas dinner in the air fryer. So we've got the stuffed turkey breast joint. Another Aldi special. Mini potatoes that we're going to roast in there. Brussels sprouts. No, Christmas dinner would be complete without some of those. So these are the frozen ones. And then... Yorkshire puddings. So, this takes an hour and 10 minutes at around 190 degrees. Miniature potatoes will take about 25 minutes. Brussels sprouts, I'm not so sure on these. So it does say you microwave them seven to nine minutes or you boil them five to seven minutes, but we're gonna kind of roast them. So, I'd say we get them in there for uh, at least 20 minutes. And Yorkshire's, they'll take about five to say six minutes, but with the air fryer, we'll go five. So, what I'm gonna do is go back to the air fryer, want it on grand zone, so I'm gonna take the divider out the middle, move my uh, giant spuds out of the way. So that's out of there, and then we've got a massive zone there in order to cook our Christmas dinner. So first things first, I'm going to put the turkey breast joint in there. I think what I'll do to make things a lot easier, I'll just do the spuds and the sprouts for the same amount of time. Do them for 25 minutes. So if I put the turkey breast joint in for 45 minutes, and then I come back, that should do the job. So I've got the turkey in there, look at that. It's got, looks like streaky bacon on the top. Mmm, that's gonna be nice. So we'll stick it in and we'll hit the grand zone button. So it's actually 180 degrees, I believe. Yeah, 180 degrees and we wanna go for 45 minutes. And I have had a, a bit of a change of heart in that I'm not gonna do the sprouts for quite as long as the spuds because it'll ruin them. So 45 minutes, off we go. So we're now around the 21 minute mark. So I'm just gonna have a look at the turkey, see how it's getting on. Um, all right, so it's looking nice, but it is it does seem to be drying out on the outside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a bit of foil on there just to keep the moisture in. 
Um, now this isn't unusual uh, with this sort of thing, so I'll uh, I'll do that and then press on. So we've almost got to the end of the first 45 minutes, just ticking down now. So what I'm going to do next is put the potatoes in, and then I'm just going to get it going for five minutes. So let's hear the beep. There we go. So this is cool, but it'll be fine. I'm only going to open it up and throw the potatoes in, not one at a time. It's very difficult though with uh, just using one hand, but I'll get them in. So just throw those all in. They're all in. You can see there's still plenty of space in there for my sprouts and my orchards. Um, so we'll now put these on for five minutes, then come back and whack the sprouts in as well. So we want to go grand zone again, 180 degrees, and we just want to drop that down to five minutes and boom, away we go. Right, so oh, spuds have had about five minutes now. So what I'm going to do once it's stopped is give them a shake and add some Brussels sprouts. They're starting to uh, cook nicely. Pour a few of these in. Won't go too mad, because you do get pretty bad wind if you have too many of these. There, that should be enough for two people. Give it a little shake around. So now we've got turkey and stuffing in there, spuds, sprouts, Yorkshire's to go in five minutes before the end. So I'm gonna do Grand Zone again. 180 degrees. We go 15 minutes, then we'll do a final five at the end to make sure everything's finished off. And we've got the Yorkshire's in there then as well. Just coming up to the end of that section of cooking. And what I'm gonna do is take the foil off and I'm gonna add the Yorkshire's. So reason I'm gonna take the foil off is just to um, crisp up the, uh, the edge of the turkey. Just give it that nice bit of a, a finish. So what I'll do, now it's finished. I'll just use the wonderful free tongs that came with it. And I'll get the foil off with Look it. Look at that, who's coming to my house for Christmas? Not you. <laughs> so I'm gonna add the Yorkshire's now. I'm just gonna put them on the top. Don't really need to do anything else other than that. The heat distributes nicely in this. So I'll close it. And then we get on to the grand zone again. 180 degrees, five minutes, and then we get to eat. Beautiful. One thing I can't share with you uh, in video form is the amazing smells that are coming out of this thing. It smells fantastic. I'm pretty much licking my lips, ready to uh, ready to eat this. I cannot wait. There we go. So I just open it up, just so just to put things into perspective of how much money I actually spent on the food here. So the, the turkey itself was £5.49 from Aldi. Comes pre-stuffed with bacon on the top. Sprouts were a pound and nine, um, and they were just a frozen bag. Potatoes were 79 pence, and the Yorkshire puddings were 99p. So this entire meal, which will easily feed two, if not three, and maybe even four, uh, has actually cost me less than £8.50. Anyway, I'm going to plate this up and tuck in. Just going to add some gravy. Need need a bit of gravy on your turkey. Oh, there we go. Right, let's see what this is like then. So first up, I'll try the turkey itself. Oh, it's very succulent, is that? Get a bit of stuffing on there, a bit of gravy. Oh, that is good. Time for a sprout. Mmm, they're good. Don't forget, too many and you might get wind. Spuds. Mm -mm -mm. And of course, being a Yorkshireman, I like Yorkshires, but I do prefer homemade ones, but for the case of uh, this video, I've uh, got some pre-made ones. Decent. Not gonna lie, that was one of the best Christmas dinners I've ever had. Really, really tasty. All for less than uh, £8.50, not bad. 
Anyway, back to the air fryer. So the grand zone is the, the bit that, for me, is the, the game changer. The fact that you've got a 10 litre uh, air fryer unit there that you can get tons in, including a, um, a full Christmas dinner. I mean, I could have I could have even squeezed more potatoes, more sprouts in, even some pigs in blankets, that kind of thing, or loads of other stuff would have fit in there, um, and it is still cooked fine. Overall, I'm very impressed, um, and I hope my review has been very useful for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you've not yet subscribed to my channel, then please do so below. Every subscription does help. And if you are looking to buy the air fryer, then please use the link in the description below as that does provide me with a, a little bit of money that incentivizes me to continue to make these videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.